Hello everyone, in this video, I would like to present our paper, Promise Sigma Protocol, how to construct an efficient threshold UTDSA from encryptions based on class groups. I'm Xinxuan Zhang. This is a joint work with Yi Deng, Shen Li Ma, Hailong Wang, Xuyang Song, and Xiang Xie. Before I talk about our contribution, I will introduce some background knowledge firstly. A T of the N threshold signature allows parties to share the ability of signing. Parties run the key generation protocol to generate a common verifying key as well as their own signing key. Such that in the signing phase, any subgroup of at least T plus one parties could sign in messages. In the meanwhile, any subgroups of T or fewer parties would fail to do that. Threshold ECDSA is one of the most famous threshold signatures. It is a threshold version of traditional ECDSA. The little has been widely used in various applications, such as TLS and SSH. The construction of ECDSA is shown on the slides. As you can see, in order to construct the threshold ECDSA, we must know how to generate the public key, capital Q, and the signature RS in a distributed way. So, in our presentation, we consider a special case of a threshold ECDSA, the two-party ECDSA. Informally, in the construction of two-party ECDSA, the capital Q and R can be generated using a protocol similar with the famous db Hellman key exchange protocol. To generate uh, S, one can require party 1 to encrypt its signing key using a homomorphic encryption scheme. In this way, the party 2 can do homomorphic operations on this encryption to have party 1 generate the signature. And of course, this encryption uh, could, be generate, uh, could be generated in the key generation phase before the signing phase. However, there is still a gap from a secure two-party ECDSA. To generate a secure ECDSA, both parties need to generate lots of their knowledge proofs to make sure that they behave honestly. Here is a specific construction of the key generation in Lindell 17 and CCL plus 19. In our paper, we focus on the choice of homomorphic encryption as well as the corresponding cell knowledge proofs, proving that the encryption CK is indeed an encryption of signing K. In Lindell 17, they chose Pelias encryption which supports large message space, but causes an expensive their knowledge proof due to the mismatch between pillar space and the ECDSA space. In, 17, uh, in CCL plus 19, they chose CL encryption, a homomorphic uh, encryption based on class group. This encryption also satisfies a large message space. However, Using this encryption also needs an expensive zero knowledge proof or an efficient zero knowledge, but based on non standard assumption, such as the Lord assumption and the strong root assumption. We hope to construct an efficient zero knowledge, zero knowledge proof for cell encryption without these non standard assumptions. So, what is CL encryption? As we have said, CL encryption is a homomorphic encryption based on class groups. In fact, CL encryption is similar with the famous L gamma encryption. Both encryption uses a pair of elements as a public key and uses the logarithm as a secret key. However, uh, those elements of CL encryption 
come from an unknown order group, while the ones of L gamma come from a, order of, a group of order P. As for encryption, and the slide shows, the serial encryption uses an extra element F coming from a DL easy group to generate the encryption, while the L gamma only uses elements coming from a DL hard group. As for decryption, as shown on the slides, both, uh, both encryptions want to extract message from the function C2 over C1 to secret K. However, in CL encryption, this function comes from a DL easy group, while the one in L gamma encryption comes from a DL hard group. That's why CL encryption supports a large message space, while the L gamma encryption only supports a small, a small one. Go back to the specific construction of ECDSA. Besides the truth of the homomorphic encryption, one still needs a their knowledge proof to prove that the encryption CK is indeed an encryption of the signing K. Here is the Sigma protocol for proving the knowledge of CR encryption put forth in CCL plus 19. The prover sent a random CR encryption in the first round to mask the witness. And then the Wi-Fi sends a challenge chosen from the side of 0 and 1. And finally, the prover opens specific uh, encryption depending on challenge. Although this protocol is secure, the sentence error is very large, and one has to repeat this protocol many times to get an acceptable sentence error, which makes this protocol very expensive. So, how about that the welfare should change from a large space? Unfortunately, if the welfare should change from a large space, this protocol is no, no longer secure. In fact, there is a lot of element attack. The board pista owns a lot of element G prime. Then you could generate an invalid encryption C prime as shown on the slides. Then if G prime to E equals one, then uh, then PSLA could convince an honest welfare with an invalid encryption. Okay. Although this protocol is not secure, we still find a key observation which shows that this protocol still satisfies some more security. In fact, in fact, we found that for any encryption C, if the malicious prover could generate an acceptable proof with a non-negligible probability, then this encryption C can be easily turned into a valid C text C prime. More specifically, suppose there is two accepting proofs with the same first message and a different challenge. Uh, it shows uh, these two equalities shown on the slides, which, uh, which shows that the pair of C1 to capital delta E and C2 to capital delta E is a valid encryption of capital delta CM. Which also claims that we could uh, use capital delta E to turn C into a valid encryption. We need to buy, uh, we denote by M tilde as shown on the slides. Then we could uh, say that C is close to a valid encryption of M tilde. So 
given secret key and the capital data E, one could easily obtain the M tilde. Suppose that P star could convince Wi-Fi with a high probability. Then for random capital delta E, the probability capital delta E satisfies our provised uh, an analysis is also high. Therefore, one could choose the random capital delta E itself and try to extract M tilde only using the secret key. However, there is a question. How could we know that the extracted message is what we want? In other words, how could we make sure the consistency of the extracted message and the message hiding in encryption C? In order to secure, in order to ensure the consistency, we try to combine the Sigma protocol for algorithm encryption and the Sigma protocol for CL encryption. Note that algorithm encryption only supports small message space but has Sigma protocol satisfying, satisfying soundness. And the CL encryption support, uh, supports large message space but its Sigma protocol doesn't satisfy soundness. That's our first idea, promise sigma protocol. Promise sigma protocol is used to prove that the consistency of two texts, one is algorithm encryption, another is CL encryption. However, uh, here, we use, here we use blue for algorithm and red for CL encryption. Another slide. In the first round, the proof send a random algorithm encryption and a random CL encryption with the same message encrypted using for mask the witness. In the second round, the wildfire chooses uh, the wildfire sends a challenge from a large space. And in the last round, the proof opens specific algorithm encryption and the corresponding CL encryption with the same plan text depending on challenge. It is easy to find that our promise sigma protocol satisfies the completeness uh, property and the uh, answer the Wi-Fi zero knowledge property. Although our, pro, our, although our protocol doesn't satisfy uh, the soundness property, it satisfies a kind of weak soundness. We call it the promise extractable property. The promise uh, extractable property contains two parts. Two parts, rewinding extractable and uh, straight line extractable. Rewinding, rewinding extractable claims that using rewinding, one could extract message, uh, the message M and the uh, randomness for algorithm encryption, capital C, which also claims that the algorithm encryption is a valid encryption. The proof of this property is easy because our promise sigma protocol contains a complete sigma protocol for L gamma. As for switching line extractable, it, it claims that one could use both secret key to extract the message encrypted in L gamma encryption. In fact, we have shown that a uh, sigma protocol for CL encryption shows that one could uh, extract message from CL encryption. Using the secret key of L gamma, one could check the message extracted is indeed the one encrypted in L gamma encryption. Meanwhile, our promise sigma protocol would ensure the consistency of about two messages. The straight line extractable property is an interesting property because we know that a standalone algorithm encrypted text is not decryptable for large print text encrypted. However, with the help of our promise sigma protocol and the CL encryption, 
the algorithm encryption is uh, is decryptable for large space uh, for large message space. Here, we remind that our promise sigma protocol doesn't ensure that the CR encryption C is a valid encryption. However, we will show that our protocol is enough for many applications, such as the threshold uh, ECDSA. We also construct another two promise sigma protocols, one for consistency of messages and another for homomorphic uh, operations. Due to the time limit, we refer listeners to our paper for more details. Go back to the construction of two-party ECDSA. We use our promise protocol to prove the consistency of capital Q1 and uh, encryption CK. Our promise sigma protocol's performance is much better than the ones used in CCL plus 19. However, we will make trouble in the simulating of homomorphic operations in signing phase. Here is the construction of signing phase uh, in Lindell 17 and uh, CCL plus 19. Note that uh, the party 2 will send C prime in the last round, which is generated by doing homomorphic operations on encryption C. With CK. However, the simulator doesn't know the homomorphic operations. It only knows the message is supposed to be encrypted in C prime. So he could uh, he can only send the inclusion of this message. Here we denote by A and B as shown on the slides. Using A and B, we could simplify a bow situation. As shown on the slides, A2 does the uh, homomorphic operations using A and B while simulator encrypt A times X1 plus B directly, where X1 is extracted by rewinding the proof. Then, if C is valid, then the randomness used in homomorphic operations uh, or encryptions will be able to mask A, which makes the output of party 2 and the simulator indistinguishable. However, our promise sigma protocol can ensure that C is a valid CL encryption. Therefore, we need to know how to simulate homomorphic operations and invalid to a text with a promise sigma proof. So our idea is to make R prime be able to mask A again. So we require the party 2 and the simulator uses C1 to R prime and C2 to R prime to re-randomize the C prime. However, in this way, party 2 will decrypt A times X1 plus B plus R prime times X1 from C prime, which means that he will fail to decrypt uh, A times X1 plus B and fail to generate the signature. Therefore, we have to require the party 2 and simulator sends R prime modulus P to help the encryption. However, how could we use R prime mask A under the situation sending R prime modulus P. In fact, we found that if R prime is chosen from a large enough space and the order of C1 and C2 to uh, C2 times F2 minus X1 is prime with P. R prime could still 
we randomize C frame. And from the promise sigma proof, we know that the encryption C is close to the encryption of X1. We show that uh, we show the connection between the order of C1 and uh, GP, as well as the order of C2 times F uh, to minus X1 and H. Therefore, with the help of our promising sigma protocol, we could uh, transform the second requirement into that P the frame with the order of GP and H, which could be easily achieved. So up to now, we finished the simulation of the homomorphic operations on an invalid subtext with a promising sigma proof. And we also finished the proof uh, we also finished the construction of our efficient two party ECDSA. Using the same technique, we could also construct an efficient multi party threshold ECDSA. Compared with CCL uh, plus 19 and CCL plus 20, our efficient two party ECDSA is significantly improved in the K generation phase and slightly efficient in signing phase. Compared with CCL plus 20, our multi-party threshold ECDSA is significantly improved in the K generation phase. But what's more important, our multi-party threshold ECDSA removes the non-standard assumption, the load assumption and the strong root assumption. That's all. Thank you for your attention.